So what is going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome to this video in which we're going to see how you can make your websites super fast. Now, because this is a developer focused video, I'm going to make sure that we include the developer related stuff, the things that actually matter and not some random BS stuff, which is just like, you know, just do this, do that, go to this URL. Um, you know, just regular stuff you're going to find on the internet. We're not going to get into depth of that. So let's start. Now, first things first, the bottlenecks for the websites. What is usually happening is that we know that what we have seen is that dynamic code is usually cheap in terms of network and size and could be really transmitted almost every time. Dynamic code is the code which actually is changing, is usually changing. It might be your homepage right, while you're creating your application. It might be some sort of code which cannot be cached or anything on the client's end, right? The problem comes with static assets. Now, static assets actually include images, video files, fonts, JavaScript files, CSS files, which are not really changing. These files might be the files which are, for example, your node modules. Now, you do not really modify the node modules at all. So... Those are the files which do not really change and could be cached on the user's end. Again, misconfigured servers and application code is also responsible for slower websites. And we're going to fix all of them in these next five powerful tips, which are my favorite. Trust me. So starting off with number five, you should not use shared hosting services. If you're a developer and if, or rather I should put it in this way, if you want to be a developer, or maybe you're a developer as well, and you're using a shared hosting service provider, it makes no sense in 2020. Why? Because we have so much better cloud providers like, you know, Google, AWS, DigitalOcean, all these stuff. And they're actually cheap, right? They're cheaper than um, a lot of shared hosting providers and they're ridiculously easy to set up with, right? So you have the pricing, like $5 per month service with DigitalOcean, which gives you full root access of a virtual machine where you can host your servers, do anything you like, and it will actually eventually help you to grow as a developer as well. So if you are someone who's hosting your website on a shared hosting, or if you're paying for that, I would highly, highly recommend you to shift to a cloud provider like AWS, Google Cloud, or DigitalOcean. All of them provide free trial as well, free credits, for DigitalOcean, you can get free $100 credits if you want using this link. And I'm not really paid for this video, but I really like DigitalOcean and I use it myself at CodeTime. So there you go. It's, it's convenient to use. All right. Number four, compress your images. Now, in assets, I could, I could have like talked about a lot of things like fonts, video files, etc., etc. But the most common thing, which is used as an asset is an image and an image is heavy trust me so how do you go about compressing your images well you have to use some sort of automation or you know CLI tool if you want to do it on a regular continuous integration or deployment basis if you're adding new images to your website otherwise it won't really make sense now you could use certain online image compressors or anything but I would really recommend you tiny PNG now tiny PNG the website it also, it also has a CLI tool, which you can just run in your directory and it will just, you know, compress your images. And it is really, really effective. TinyPNG actually compresses a lot of, um, a lot of images very efficiently. You get 60, 70, 80, 90% um, compression rate. So that's that. Moving on to number three, we have code and bundle splitting. Now, I cannot um, emphasize enough on this. How important this is and uh, yeah this is this basically means that you have to use some sort of module bundler like webpack or parcel number one number two is you have to code split your application by code splitting what I mean is that lazily load only the code which is required at that particular moment so for example if you are writing a react application you might have a lot of pages like home page about page contact us feedback um, login page then the dashboard interface of that particular site you don't really want all of that to load at once right you might want to prefetch it once the initial render has been done 
but only prefetch it, right? You do not really want to load all the pages at once when they are not required. That is called code splitting. Bundle splitting, on the other hand, means that you are splitting a single file into multiple smaller files. Now, by that, what I mean is that by default, if you see Webpack, what it will do is it will create bundles, uh, a single bundle of known modules, right? If you configure it in such a way, in one way, it can actually spit out a vendors file, vendors main.js, something like that, which would be a chunk of all the node modules. Now, what you want is not that, but actually separate files, separate node modules, files, individual files, which are loading on your page as separate JavaScript files. Now, there's a lot of debate about this, whether this is right or wrong. There's a medium article you can see on the screen which states that you should do it. And then the Webpack developer comments that this should not be done because um, uh, the bytecode caching is something which is uh, to be taken care of by the browsers. But I'm not kind of inclined towards that because the official websites of V8, that is the engine powering Chrome browser and uh, Mozilla as well, these guys actually have bytecode implementation implemented inside them. A uh, bytecode caching rather I should say. So what bytecode byte caching do is that it will cache the bytecode of the JavaScript which is parsed, which is like the cost of uh, multiple splits of the file. And uh, it will it'll, basically speed up your applications so as to you do not have to perform multiple network requests as well as you do not have to parse and evaluate multiple JavaScript files. So in a nutshell, I would say, yep, code split your application and bundle split your application as well. Now, obviously you have to maintain a decent balance, but again, your mileage may vary with this. So just go ahead and figure out the stuff yourself. Then finally, obviously you should minify your JavaScript and CSS as well, because that is something you can do on your on your end to just you know trim out some commands some white space some extra spaces because why do you want to ship you know extra bloatware to your users when it can be um, processed in a much smaller package anyway so moving on we have number two as setting the expiry headers now this is something which is very important and critical in terms of um, you know, speeding up the website, not really on the first load, but on the subsequent loads. So what do you really want to do is you want to set the expiry of static assets as much as you can in the future. And you need to use the um, cache busting techniques provided by module bundlers like Webpack, which actually changes the names of the file in case there's a change to the file, right? So what do you do? is you tell the browser, hey browser, go ahead and cache all of these files, except this, 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 this index.html file or maybe some main entry point files. So you never want to really cache the dynamic code. Remember, it, I talked about it in the first slide. So you do not want to cache the dynamic code, right? Which are the entry points to your website. You want to cache all the other assets inside that entry point, And you want to tell the browser to just go ahead and cache it. Now, if there's any change later on in the future, what you want is you want to change the dynamic front end um, entry point of the code plus the names of the file as well so that the browser does not use um, the invalidated cache files, right? So this is a simple example of how you would implement expiry headers in Nginx um, basically. So yeah, again, it depends on how you have configured your servers and how you're working. So this is like the basic overview. I'm not really going into depth of implementations and everything. So just go ahead and figure it out how you're going to implement this on your end. Finally, finally, this is something which was new to me when I was like um, digging up resources about uh, how we can speed up our websites. And actually, I've implemented this as well myself on CodeDAM. Enable broadly compression. Now, broadly compression, I, I really never heard about it um, before. So it was something new. But what it is, if it is new to you as well, it is a it is a compression just like um, gzip. I would say it's a compression algorithm from Google, but it is much better than gzip in terms of performance. It is 20 to 25 percent um, efficient. I would say that means it compresses in a lower size than gzip, right? 
and it is supported by major browsers so it is no problem to implement this inside your servers so let's see one example of how this works so right now you're gonna see you're seeing the broadly versus gzip versus no comparison no compression comparison you see the first file 3.33 megabytes is the file which is there um, when there's no compression right and this is straight off from my circle c i build for code time one of my builds so 3.33 megabytes no compression if you gzip this file which is the third entry you get a size of 783 kilobytes almost 800 kilobytes so that is a very nice reduction in size right almost over 2 mbs and uh, if you do broadly compression you get additional 200 kilobytes of saving so that's a lot if you ask me if you have a lot of resources going on on the side that's a lot of compression broadly saves you 200 kilobytes more on a 3.33 megabit megabyte build so yeah that's that's uh less than 10 percent but still it's it's good so again broadly is configurable in nginx if you use nginx which is something i recommend for static file serving there you have your answer and it is developed and backed by google so it's not really going anywhere anytime soon so yeah i mean that's that's pretty much it for um my tips and only following these five tips i was able to get a 97 percent page speed core and 80 percent device low score code and uh, the reason these 3% and 20% are lagging is because mainly because of CDNs, because I'm not really using CDNs on CodeDAM right now. But again, this is something which Wiselow puts in a lot of um, weightage that you should use CDNs or something. But um, I mean, it's okay once you have the caching and everything implemented and your first page, first page speed, uh, first time load is probably less than under five seconds, you're good to go. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe, like the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next video real quick.